This video will be a note for note breakdown of the guitar solo that enters at 2 minutes and 34 seconds into the song. The supporting bass, acoustic, and distorted rhythm guitar parts that appear in the choruses are the foundation of this solo. Since these parts were already analyzed in other videos of this four part series, they will not be further expanded upon in this video. The tuning used in this video and on the record is standard E and 440 wavelength calibration. This solo is actually going to be a little over 9 measures long. We're going to start out by placing the third finger on the D string at the 7th fret. The solo actually begins on the last quarter note of the second chorus. We're going to do a fill to lead into the solo. This fill will involve four sixteenth notes. We'll start by picking this note down on four. On E, we're going to bend the note up a half step in pitch. On E and B, we're going to release the bend and let it sustain out as we go back to the original unbent position of the note. And to finish up the fill, we're going to pull off with the third finger to the first finger on the same string at the fifth fret. That's the uh beat. Notice that this fill only involved one picking technique and that was down on four. The other three sixteenth notes were produced entirely by the left hand. With the four count lead in, here's what the fill leading into the solo is going to sound like. One, two, three, four mm. and up. The first two measures of this solo are pretty much going to follow the rhythm guitar part note for note. The primary difference is that the rhythm guitars are going to play chords and we're just going to play a single note along with those chords. We're going to play it with the same count and the same picking technique that was outlined in the first video of this four part series, so there's no need to recap it here. We're going to place the third finger back on the D string at the 7th fret, this is an A note. The rhythm guitar parts are playing a D. This works because A is a fifth of D. We're going to start out the first measure just like this. One, two, a three E. Okay, notice that on E, I picked the open D string upwards. We're going to progress from there to the G note located on the D string at the 5th fret with your first finger. The rhythm guitar is going to progress to C there. This works once again because G is the fifth of C. At the end of the uh, measure, you're going to notice that we picked the open D string again on that final 16th note upwards. With the four count lead in, here's what the first measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four. One, two, a three, e, and four, and up. Now we start the second measure. We're going to place the third finger on the A string at the seventh fret. Okay, this is an E note. The guitar parts are going to an E chord. This is the root note, so it works. On the E beat, notice that we're going to pick the open A string. With the four count lead in, here's what the first measure and a half will sound like. One, two, Three, four, one, two, a three, e, and four, and a one, two, a three, e. And to finish up that second measure, we're going to go back to the G. Okay, that's where the first finger is on the D string at the fifth fret. The rhythm guitar goes to G major. Once again, this is the root note. With the four count lead in, here's what the first two measures are going to sound like. And I'm going to add the lead in to start the solo. One, two, three, four, and a one, two, a three, and four, and a one, two, a three, and four, and a. Now we start out the third measure. What we're going to do is place the first finger on the D string at the fourth fret. We're going to pick this note down on one and let it ring out as a sixteenth note. On E, which is a 16th right after one, we're going to hammer onto that same string using the middle finger to the fifth fret. The second 16th note is produced entirely by the left hand. On the and beat, we're going to lift that middle finger 
and the first finger should already be locked down on a D string at the fourth fret. We're going to pick this down again, let that sustain out as another 16th note. On a, uh, which is the final 16th note of the first quarter, we're going to slide down to the second fret on that same string. With a four count lead in, here's how the third measure is going to start out. One, two, three, four, one, and a. From this point, we're going to pick the open D string down on two and let it ring out as a dotted quarter note, which is basically three eighths of the measure. With a four count lead in, here's what we have for the third measure so far. One, two, three, four, one, and two, three. On the end beat right after three, we're going to place that first finger on the A string at the fifth fret. We're going to pick this up and we're going to gradually bend this note really slowly. It's going to sustain out for the last three eighths of this measure and for the first three eighths of the fourth measure. With the four count lead in, here's what we have so far. One, two, three, four, one and two, three and four, one, two. On the end beat right after two, we're going to place the third finger on the A string at the seventh fret and pick it up again. This is going to sustain out as a quarter note. To finish up the fourth measure, what we're going to do is take the first finger and go to the D string at the fifth fret. This is three eighth notes counted and four and picked up, down and up like this. And four and. With the four count lead in, here's what the third and fourth measures are going to sound like. One, two, three, four, one and two, three and four, one, two and three and four and. Let's run through the first four measures of the solo, starting from the fill that leads into the solo at the end of the second chorus. I won't count this aloud as I play it, I'm just going to give you the four count lead in. One, two, three. The first half of the next four measures will all start out using a series of tight triplets, each with the same picking pattern and count. But the double stop chords played at the beginning of these measures will change each time. This pattern is also used in Seven Nation Army and For Whom the Bell Tolls. It was explained in those videos but wasn't illustrated. Before proceeding with the rest of this solo, let's take a couple minutes to further expand upon this. This is one full measure of triplets. Each triplet represents a single unspecified musical note in this example. Notice that the measure is divided into 12 evenly spaced triplets. There's three triplets for each downbeat where a metronome clicks or the foot is tapped. These are counted 1 and a, 2 and a, 3 and a, 4 and a. Also notice the number 3 above the single bar that connects them. This is meant to specify that these are a series of triplets, so they aren't mistaken for a series of three quarter notes. With a four count lead in, here's what this measure will sound like played on the open E string. One, two, three, four, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. To play the rest of this solo, we are only interested in the first half of each measure. Notice the first and second, third and fourth, and the fifth and sixth triplets are tied together. Only the first triplet of each tied pair is picked, while the time value of each ensuing triplet is absorbed by the first note of the pair. For simplicity, I'm counting these as one, a, uh, and. The parentheses represent where the tied beats that are silent in this count will fall. With a four count lead in, here's what this series of tied triplets will sound like played on the open E string. One, two, three, four, one, a, uh, and. This is the way that a series of tied triplets is commonly notated in standard sheet music. Notice that for simplicity, there's three unconnected quarter notes inside a line bracket with a number three in the middle. Although it looks different, 
It's exactly the same thing as illustrated in the previous example. This is visually less cluttering when applied to a graph of sheet music. Notice the picking motion. Down on one, up on a, and down on an. Now we have reached the fifth measure. When we finished up the fourth measure, we finished up using the note where the first finger is on the D string at the fifth fret. What we're going to do now is take that finger and lay it across the D and G strings on that same fret and bar them. Throughout most of the rest of the solo, we're going to use double stops. A double stop is simply two notes that ring together to create a chord. For the first beat in our series of tied triplets to start the measure, we're going to place the third finger on the G string at the 7th fret. This creates a G5 power chord. We'll pick this down. On the A beat, we're going to lift that finger up and pick the double stop where the first finger is barring those two strings. This is upwards. To finish up our series of tied triplets, we're going to go back to the 7th fret with that third finger on the G string, we're going to pick this down. This note will ring out through three, and on E, which is the first sixteenth note right after three, we're going to pick the double stop where the first finger is upwards. That will ring out until the last eighth note of the measure. We'll pick the open D string upwards to finish up the fifth measure. With a four count lead in, here's what the fifth measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four, one, up, uh, and E, and. Okay, now we start the sixth measure. We're going to take that first finger and go to the seventh fret and bar the G and B strings. To start out our series of tied triplets, we're going to place the middle finger on the B string at the eighth fret. We're going to pick this down on one. On the up beat, we're going to lift that finger and pick the double stop where the first finger is, upwards. On N, to finish up our series of tied triplets, we're going to put the middle finger back down on the 8th fret of the B string and pick it down. This will ring out through 3, and on E, the first 16th note after 3, we're going to pick the note where the first finger is up, or the double stop where the first finger is up. Okay, we're going to finish up this measure by shifting down to the 5th fret on them same two strings, we're going to play this double stop by picking it down on 4. That's going to be an 8th note. We're going to finish up this measure exactly the same way we finished up the 5th measure. We're going to pick the open D string upwards with the last 8th note. With a 4 count lead in, this is what the 6th measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four. One, uh, and E, four, and. With a four count lead in, here's what the fifth and sixth measures combined are going to sound like. One, two, three, four. One, uh, and E, and one, uh, and E, four, and. And now we have reached the seventh measure. We're going to start out by placing the first finger on the G and B strings at the 7th fret. We're going to place the pinky on the B string at the 10th fret. We're going to pick this double stop down on 1 to start our series of tied triplets. On A, uh, we're going to lift up the pinky, and the middle finger will be on the B string at the 8th fret. We'll pick this double stop up. To finish up this series of tied triplets, we're going to pick that same double stop down on the and beat. This note will ring out through three. On E, the first sixteenth note after three, we're going to lift the middle finger and pick the double stop where our first finger is, upwards. We'll pick that same double stop again down on four and let that ring out as an eighth note. And to finish up the seventh measure, we're going to pick the open D string upwards on the last eighth note of the measure. With the four count lead in, this is what the seventh measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four. One, up, uh, and E, four, and. Now we've reached the eighth measure. Notice that the first finger is already barring the G and B strings at the seventh fret. 
we're just going to place the third finger on the G string at the ninth fret. We'll pick this double stop down on one to start our series of tied triplets. On the upbeat, we'll lift up that finger to third finger and pick the double stop where the first finger is. We'll finish up the series of tied triplets by placing that third finger back down on the G string at the ninth fret and pick it down. This will ring out up until the last eighth note right after three. To finish up the measure, we're going to lift up that third finger. We're going to pick the G string where the first finger is on the seventh fret. We're going to pick that upwards on the end beat after three and slide up a step and pitch as we do it. After we slide up, we'll pick it two more times, pick down and up as eighth notes. This will be counted and four and just like this. And four and. With a four count lead in, here's what the eighth measure is going to sound like. One, two, three, four. One, uh, and, and four and. And to finish up the solo, this will be the ninth measure. We're just going to shift down a step and pitch with that first finger on the G string. We'll pick this down on one. This is the point where the third verse enters. We're just going to give that note a vibrato and it'll eventually fade away on its own. With the four count lead in, here's what measures seven through nine are going to sound like. One, two, three, four, one uh, and E, four and one uh, and and four and one two three four. Let's run through measures five through nine just one time. I won't count this aloud as I play it. I'm just going to give you the four count lead in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Let's run through the entire solo just one time, starting from the lead in at the end of the second chorus. I won't count this aloud as I play it, I'm just going to give you the four count lead in. Actually, a three count lead in. One, two, three. <laughs> If you listen carefully to the last half of the solo, it sounds like a fourth guitar enters with yet another distinctly different part. Upon further review, it's likely just the result of an effect added to the guitar as it solos. This effect makes it sound like there is more going on there than there actually is. The exact effect being used is uncertain, but a logical guess is the rotary speaker effect with a rate set high. Here's what the last four measures will sound like using this effect. The following demo will only include the bass and the acoustic guitar part played on a clean electric as the foundation. The solo will also be free of any effects. This is likely the way it will sound if played live by a band with only two guitar players in it.
The solo will sound good if you don't use any effects. It's just a matter of playing it more smoothly and accurately. Effects do add quality to the sound, but they are a luxury, not a necessity. They also have downfalls. They clutter up the stage and get in the way in smaller bars and clubs where floor space is limited. More patch cord connections means more potential points of failure. Cords eventually always short out or a battery goes dead. More time is also wasted making adjustments in between songs. These things make a band sound bad when they happen during a gig. Effects units often act up or die out after a year anyway, so why waste your money? Concentrate instead on becoming a smooth and precise guitarist who isn't dependent upon them. They will become a crutch if you let them. Some guys literally can't play without them, which can be a problem.